So I'm going to give you a bit of a description about uh, the safe use of hydrocortisone or cortisol. So hydrocortisone is the generic name of the medicine, which is the same as cortisol, which is the hormone, and Cortef is the brand. They also make it compounded, where it doesn't have any tablet uh, constituents. So Dr. Jeffries is a very famous physician in Cleveland who wrote this book called The Safe, Safe Use of Hydrocortisone, and when I was sick, he talked to me. So his feeling was that people who are low in hydrocortisone will end up doing better if they're on five milligrams four times a day. That's 20 milligrams a day. What we do in integrative medicine is usually do more in the morning. So the cortisol should be high in the morning, like your saliva test, and then come down at noon to be moderate. And then at four o'clock it goes lower. And then you want tea and biscuits and you feel tired in the afternoon when people want to take a nap. So that's why tea time exists. And then by midnight it's zilch. So the normal graph of a saliva cortisol is like that and you're trying to recreate normal. So when people say, I don't want to take steroids because I don't want to be immunosuppressed, we're talking about um, small amounts of bioidentical cortisol, not prednisone. And prednisone can suppress your immune system, yeah. but cortisol does not in low doses. So we're recreating, because we don't want around all day long immunosuppressed, we have cortisol and we re release it under stress. So if somebody yells at us and we fight back, we release adrenaline and cortisol. And then everything calms down and we stop. If we're stressed all the time, we're releasing cortisol all the time and we become sometimes adrenally insufficient from pumping out for years. So, the, you know, one of my theories that I explain is that if you have dysautonomia from, let's say, mold exposure or some chemical exposure, it's damaged the nervous system, the nerves aren't telling the veins to constrict in the legs, so you feel heavy, like there's blood in the legs, the heart may go quickly, and the body is under stress, so it's pumping out cortisol too much, too long, too many years, and then you can get adrenal insufficiency from being environmentally ill, if, if that makes sense. So it's a little complicated, but... So you've been been stressed for so long so that, long. that your, right. your reserves get depleted. Right. So people can have a saliva test where they have high output of cortisol, and then a few years later, moderately low, and then a few years later, burnt out completely, and then they don't have anything to show. And that point, it's more dangerous to have no cortisol than to have the cortisol. So cortisol s sustains life. Without cortisol, you're dead within two days. So if you take the adrenals out of an animal, an animal like a rat or whatever, the animal will die because there's no cortisol and you can't handle anything. You just lie there like a worm, you can't get up, you're mm -hmm. exhausted. Um, people, when they have surgery or infection, they produce more cortisol for the stress. They need to have it available. So if you get the flu and you don't have enough cortisol and your adrenals are tired, you'll be in bed for weeks. You'll be wiped out, you'll be abnormally ill. So you give the cortisol, and, and then it helps the person to get over the illness. So Jeffries put in the book that if you have inadequate cortisol, your immune system is weak. You need enough hydrocortisone to like function and have a normal ability to fight off bacterial infection. So even though when you read on the internet, it'll say you need to be careful of taking steroids, and if you want to have a big piece of paper, here, you have a big one. If you want to be careful of taking steroids because it's going to suppress your immune system, it's actually the opposite. What's dangerous is to have no cortisol and go around in life because if you have an accident or a car accident or something, you can lower your blood pressure from the stress and you die within five minutes. It's over. So what I do is they have these, either a necklace you can wear that says, you know, that you've got Addison's disease, or they have a bracelet. And there's a card that says, oh, conditions must, which must be treated immediately if you have adrenal insufficiency. Mm -hmm. Severe injury, blood loss, fluid or electrolyte loss, infections, severe vomiting, and diarrhea. So if you're having vomiting, you can't take your pill, your hydrocortisone pill, you need to have it injected. So it saves your life, and it's like 50 to 100 milligrams. 
very large dose, boom, five minutes, you know, you're golden. This bracelet says Addison's disease, uh, adrenal insufficiency, give 100 milligrams of hydrocortisone in the event of an emergency. So I understand when people say they don't like what they're reading on the internet, but if somebody comes back and they have a positive stimulation test to say they have Addison's disease, they can choose not to, to take hydrocortisone, but they gotta sign a release that says, I know I could die. Or I don't wanna take it, but I'll wear the bracelet in an emergency, mm -hmm. they'll give me the hydrocortisone. The other thing is you can take supplements that boost adrenal function. So how about if I just list them so we have them in, a, in one place. Vitamin C is most highly concentrated in the adrenal. So intravenous oral vitamin C is great for the adrenal gland. And, and the next thing would be vitamin B5 or penethenic acid. Okay, so I can give you a list. No, uh, these are all my questions actually that I'm Really? Asking. Yeah. So the other things that you can take are cordyceps, which is a mushroom. Everybody uses cordyceps. Well, but I mean, you may not tolerate it because some mold sensitive patients can't tolerate it. And then licorice, uh, which is in, like there's a supplement. HGL? Uh, Deglycerized mm -hmm. licorice. And this particular supplement called Phytocort has reishi mushroom, shrubby something or other, Chinese licorice, and noni fruit. <laughs> and it's very useful for people with adrenal insufficiency. The other one I've been using is this one called ADR Formula, and it's got B5, it's got ginseng, it's got licorice, and it has whole adrenal from the cattle. And then there's another supplement that Allergy Research Group is just called Adrenal. So it's bovine adrenal. People can choose not to treat their adrenal insufficiency, but it could be unwise. Because if you have a stressful situation and you don't have the cortisol with you, or the ambulance attendant doesn't know when he's coming to get you, then you'll get confused, you won't remember what to say. Right. And young women die often enough from untreated Addison's, from like a urinary infection or car accident. So I'm an emergency medicine doc, and I think we're missing a lot of adrenal insufficiency in the ER with people who have pneumonia, and that's why you know some famous people have died, because they go in, nobody realizes they have Addison's disease when they have their pneumonia, and then they just drop their blood pressure, and then they're, that's it. There's no time to recoup. Um, so I think it's important to look at saliva four times a day, look at the 24-hour urine for the cortisol, and do the stimulation test, and do the morning cortisol. So in your case, the morning cortisol is low, mm -hmm. and that would mean likely Addison's disease. And then we're waiting to see, does the stimulation test mean you have real Addison's, or is it just a little low, and you need maybe a few milligrams, but not full replacement? Mm -hmm. So the last thing I'll say, since I'm recording this, is that the adrenal puts out 25 milligrams a day of hydrocortisone. When you eat it, 30% goes through the liver, it's called first pass effect, and gets chewed up and wasted. So you may need 40 milligrams to fully replace. And if you just need mild replacement, you may take a lot less. But the maximum usually is like 25 to 40 milligrams a day. Okay, great. Okay, thanks.